Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another keyboard from Red Dragon. Now, transparent keyboards do seem to be all the rage right now, so we can't blame Red Dragon for jumping in the game. Today we're taking a look at the Irelia Pro from Red Dragon. Now this is a 94 key, it's like a compact 1800, um, though it doesn't have that middle uh, so it's not really a 98, a 98 or an 1800 because it doesn't have that navigation column right there. But it does have a numpad as well as your function key. So it is an interesting layout. I know Red Dragon's been playing around with some different layouts and you can't blame them for that. I mean, trying out different things is the name of the game. Now this is a three mode uh, with 2.4 and three Bluetooth devices, I do believe. And the model number of this one is, usually that's up front. This is, okay, this is a K658. All right, K658. But this one that we're looking at today, it's the Pro, usually with Red Dragon, when they say Pro, it's a wireless version keyboard. Well, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have in here. Gotta say, packaging for me as a I previously worked as a product manager. I think it's important. I like how they do a sleeve, the outside box, but then the inside box, you've got the case, the Red Dragon logo. I just, I think it's just a nice design. So opening it up, I'm gonna take a look at what accessories we have first. Now it looks like we've got some extra switches, which thank you, Red Dragon. You're always very good at providing extra switches with your keyboard switches. I think every pre-built keyboard should include. So it looks like we have, oh, are these Otemi crystal switches? All right, they are badged Red Dragon. And they are not lubed, but despite not being lubed, they don't really have that much ping to it. Just the slightest amount of ping. But as you can see, we've got a total of, oh, eight extra switches that's that's nice i mean i like one extra switch per like 20 is good but that's really good so we've got your standard uh key switch and key cap puller. i love the ones with the hole in the middle because you can use your finger as leverage with it we have again red dragon does a lot of things right and this is another thing that red dragon does right i know it's a little thing all keyboards come with their cables. Yes, most of them nowadays are USB-C, thankfully. No more having to worry about micro or mini or whatever the other USBs were. But some laptops, especially nowadays, most of the laptops that come out hardly even have a USB-A port. So being able to plug in C to C is extremely important. But some are still going to have the A port and don't have a C port on it. Putting this adapter on a tail, on the cable, is huge. And this is why I primarily use these when I'm going around, because I do I have some, some laptops that only have the USB-C ports. But most of my other computers do have A ports. Sometimes I don't have a free A port and I want to use the C port on some of my newer PCs. But this is something that Red Dragon being I don't want to call them budget because I, I think they, they deliver, for the most part, good quality keyboards at a decent price. So they're in stock and affordable. But they're not budget, but they're doing things that even premium keyboard makers are not doing. I mean, I, I doubt this tail costs anything more than a handful of pennies. Uh, and a lot of them actually do come with a USB-C to USB-A adapter, but it's just loose in there. And I don't know about you, but I, I'm good at losing little things. So I always like to point this out because I think this is very customer centric. It's a great idea. And it's something that I wish more keyboard manufacturers would do. And as always with Red Dragon, we have some ready for battle stickers. Uh, they're the thinner stickers, but I mean, 
I like stickers. I like the sticker bomb stuff, so I have a nice collection of these. And then we have, of course, the manual. So this will give us all of the functionality. It's weird to see 94 TV hot swap. So let's see how well. Oh, it's in Spanish. Estimado usuario, gracias por elegir Red Dragon Light para proteger sus derechos y obtener un mejor servicio al cliente. Le pedimos que preste atención a las reglas de la garantía. All right, I'm not uh, going to a Spanish <laughs> diatribe here. Though I have had a couple of people ask me if I could do reviews in Spanish as well. Maybe I'll get to that one day. And here we are with the A658. I really, uh, am I saying that right? K658 Irelia. I think I'm saying that right. Pro. So, like I said, the, this transparent keyboard trend is really popular right now. Looks like we have OEM keycaps, so a little bit taller than usual. We have the USB port here on the side. We have a transparent case, which is similar to the one in the K631 Pro, I believe, the SE model. And then below we have, thankfully, a pocket, the USB 2.4 receiver. I don't know how many of these I have that are just laying around that I don't know what they are because the keyboard doesn't have a way to store it. All keyboards that have a 2.4 should store it. But, well, so we have an off switch, which is going to be for USB, and we have a 2.4, and we have a Bluetooth switch. We have one set of flip out feet. gotta say red dragon boards are by far getting better and better each and every one that i review as of late they sound decent out of the box whereas red dragon used to be kind of like rk used to be yeah you knew that it was going to be a good keyboard once you put in the time to mod it but this doesn't really require much modding i mean for a lot of people this is going to be sufficient enough for them to all right time for me to get to work this is it let's go because it sounds and it feels pretty good. This is a lighter switch. But it sounds a little scratchy. Now, scratchiness, yes, adding some lube to the switch will dampen that scratchiness. But the majority of switches, after use for a week, two weeks, depending on how often you use your keyboard, that scratchiness is going to go away because they're going the switches inside the stem and the housing are going to wear away to where it becomes smoother now for those that don't like to wait i would rather them be nice and smooth from the beginning without that that scratch to it you can either buy or build a switch breaking machine i have one i do use them for several switches um, usually just 50,000 cycles does an amazing job and honestly in some cases it's almost like a different switch once you're done with it but this is in my opinion a pretty good switch like i said it is stock and it is not lubed but it has just the most minimal amount of pain um, it does seem to be a bit of a lighter switch i'd say on the 40 45 gram weight but it is completely clear, so the RGB should come through nicely. Uh, taking a look at the PCB, we see that we have north facing. I don't know, I don't think that Red Dragon has of yet released a south facing uh, PCB, but I'm gonna reach out to them and ask to see if they have any plans for any south facing keyboards and do they have any plans for any QMK via the keyboards because that would be very interesting. So it looks like we do have oh, a very closed cell foam down below. And we have what feels like a silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB. And it also looks like we are dealing with a polycarbonate or PC plate as well. Now I do know the case is made out of polycarbonate. So this is, it's got no metal in it. It does feel a little bit lighter though that silicone patent below is probably the heavy part of it. All right, so taking a look at these keycaps real quick, we do seem to have 
an etched legend on there. And they look to be of good thickness. I guess 1.2, 1.3. Ooh, 1.4. That's pretty thick for a Red Dragon keycap. I like that. I gotta say, I, I do like these, these switches. Now let's see what we've got for stabilizers. Now there's a tiny amount of wiggle, but it's not that much, and that can definitely be fixed up with a little bit of tape. All right, so we do have the milky style stabilizers, and unfortunately, they are the old style as they still have the feet that will need to be clipped off. And that I will do when I come back to this keyboard. Um, I have a, a few transparent keyboards that I have a little plan that I'm gonna do to make them, well, I don't wanna get too much into it, but I'll be coming back to this keyboard. Um, and I'll definitely be fixing these stabilizers, making them a little bit tighter and clipping them as well as maybe putting a band-aid down there. Now they are three and five pin hot swap compatible as Red Dragons now are. They used to be for a long time either soldered or only Milmax style or Temu hot swap sockets. But now we're dealing with full three and five pin hot swap compatibility. As you can see, the switch is a five pin switch. That has a slight amount of tick. That wire is probably just a tad unbalanced, but that's that's an easy fix. All right, so taking a look at the layout. So basically, if we were just to do this, we've almost got a 65% because we have the short 1.75 shift key here, and then we have the arrow keys here. Now, what we don't have is an entire column that we're missing right here. Now, for me, that is something that would impede my workflow because I, I use the numpad by touch. So I would be doing this for plus and this for enter a lot. Um, I guess this one expects you to use this as enter. And the fact that plus and minus and the division and the multiplier operators are on top of each other as opposed to how they're normally laid out just gives me a bit of pause now that said if i go ahead because this is a skinny enough keyboard i mean it's about the width of a tkl if not a little bit yeah it's not quite as wide as a tkl so i know that i'm going to have enough space on my um, desk drawer to be able to put a macro pad next to here in case you know I'm doing programming and I need to do some a lot of number entry. So at least I still have that space. I turn off the number lock. I have some extra arrows. I have my home, my page up, my end, my page down, delete, insert, all right there. That I dig. So if you're gonna use this as a numpad, it's gonna take some getting used to. But if you're just gonna use it as a navigation cluster, I think it's not going to take much getting used to at all. Um, ah, I just noticed the escape key is actually a red dragon key. Now, don't get me wrong. I love, you know, novelties. And that's basically what it is, is a novelty. But keyboards that have novelties like this should also include keycaps to just have the normal. Like, what if I just want enter? What if I just want a space bar without ready for battle? I mean... Yes, sometimes fighting bugs and software can be quite a battle, but I know they're talking about games. Now, they are more of a gaming-centric company, but they have listened a lot to the enthusiast community, and they are delivering some better keyboards. I mean, take a Red Dragon from even two years ago, heck, even a year ago, and compare it to anything they've released this year, and it's going to be a completely different story. And if you blind test it with people that may not know much about keyboards, I'm going to guarantee you they're going to say that the newer Red Dragon is a pricier keyboard because it just does feel more premium. But their prices haven't gone up. They, their prices stay in the same range as they have been. So that's a really good thing. And Red Dragon, their support has been pretty good. I've There's been a couple of situations where I've had um, 
users that come to me and I bought this, but this happened or this isn't working or anything like that. I'm like, reach out to their support, um, let them know I sent you. And I don't know why some people are, they go to the internet first before hitting support. They just assume that support isn't going to help or something. But uh, nine times out of 10, everybody will come back to me. If they come back to me, they'll tell me, hey, I reached out to support. They answered within a day. I've got another keyboard on the way. And they said, just go ahead and keep this one. So Red Dragon support from the experiences that everybody else shares with me. I haven't had to deal with them because I, I, I do not have a Red Dragon board that has died on yet. So... I mean, that's something to say, and I do use them. I cycle through them. I especially, I love my six, is it a 631? Yeah, the K631. I have several of these, and I use them quite frequently. I just, I like them. They're they're great 65% board, and they last, and they just work. So, um, so I've got to say, I do have a thing for Red Dragon. It's funny because, I mean, I did when I... Not when I first started out, because when I first started out, I got some uh, Kickstarter keyboards, like uh, one from MechanicalKeyboards.com and Ducky, I think. It was the Disco, TKL, and then a couple other ones. For the life of me, can't remember the names of them. But one of the first off-the-shelf keyboards I bought was the K5, K551. Uh, the full size. I also bought a K552, the TKL version, and I modded the heck out of those two. And I still, to this day, will just pick them up and use them because I like them. They're good <laughs> keyboards, and they still work despite all of the mods and everything I've done to them. Um, despite them only working with Otemu style hot swap sockets, well, most Akko switches work in there. So, I mean, my uh, K551, I've got the Marvel. Uh, the, the MT3 Marvel set, uh, Infinity War, on it, and um, the Rose Red Octos, and it sounds great. It sounds really good. I mean, it's a full size. I don't much use full sizes anymore, but it is really nice. So they hold up quite well, um, and that's probably that gamer influence there. So I, I really... I don't know. I find it difficult to distinguish. I mean, yes, I know this one's geared more towards gaming and that one's geared more towards office, but a mechanical keyboard is a mechanical keyboard. But since they are geared towards gamers, I don't know what they're doing. Their batteries last longer. I have a, um, a Fecker that has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery that if I use it wirelessly for about a week, the battery will die now on these k631s they have a 1500 milliamp hour battery i've literally used one for a month straight and it still had juice how they do it i don't know but they also probably have some sort of secret sauce in there that they're like hey gamers are going to be rough on our keyboards so they make they build them well they these keyboards last i mean a k551 i got it the year I think it came out. I want to say 20, it was either 2017 or 2019, an odd year, but it's probably 2017. I've had it for a while. I ported it because it had, uh, the cord was plugged in, so I ported it and added a USB-C port to it. And it still works. I pull it out every once in a while and use it. And um, my kids are always like, hey dad, show my friends the keyboard that you're like, oh. And I painted it blue and purple and I don't know. Anyway. Red Dragon boards hold up, and that's been my experience. I, I own probably probably two dozen and getting closer to three dozen Red Dragon boards, and I still have not had one die on. So there is that. Anyway, so with this, I'm definitely going to come back to it and mod it because I've had a lot of success modding these. And oh, that's one thing I did want to check. Is this an integrated plate one? All right, yeah, this is built just like these. And that's one of the reasons that I like these is that the top part of the case is also the plate. So it's integrated. So um, it's plastic. And I think that Red Dragon, if I'm not mistaken, was some of the first in stock keyboards to have anything other than steel plates on their keyboards. So this one being that integrated plate, 
I guarantee you I'm going to be able to make this keyboard fly like nobody's business. Though, with some Oco switches, we could make it clack as well. Now, how about... Let's see what this is all about. Nice, quick boot-up cycle. All right, it's already going into... Uh, uh, all right, so that's the on and off. Let me see. That's the brightness. There's the effects. We see then we have scroll lock, pause, insert, and delete over here, as well as home and end, and page up, page down, in case you are using this as a numpad. But right now, since it's in Bluetooth mode, let's go ahead and try to connect it and see what we've got. It connects right away without issue. Um, that's one of the things I gotta say. Uh, I come across, I, I use Linux as my primary operating system. I'm recording this right now on OBS in Linux and Arch. And some keyboards, for some reason, just do not want to work with Bluetooth over Linux, even though, I mean, it's the same hardware. I can reboot it into Windows and it, it'll connect. But I come across keyboards that have Bluetooth that won't even connect to my Windows PCs. So it's like, what? But every Red Dragon board that I've had connects to Bluetooth and does it almost immediately and remembers it for a while if I don't reformat my machine, which one of the beauties of Linux, I don't have to reformat that often, if at all. Um, it's going to remember it. I turn it on. It connects right away. can't tell you how many times I've gone to turn on a keyboard and show the lights to somebody and I'll start pressing things and then I hear a computer in the other room getting mad at me. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, it's paired to it. I forgot. <laughs> so they do have a good Bluetooth stack. Um, again, they also have some sort of battery sipping technology because their batteries, even though they're smaller, they last longer. So, not all milliamp hour ratings are the same when it comes to batteries on keyboards. That, or batteries may be the same, but how the keyboard uses that power is not always the same. And there it's changing through the point. Nice and bright LEDs. RGB on this is beautiful. The shine that the keycaps have even make it pop out some more. But as with a lot of these transparent keyboards, the legends just seem to disappear inside of the color. So that's, I like, I like some transparent cases, but transparent keycaps, it's like, mm. now I touch type for the most part. But still, sometimes I like to look down and if it's like, oh, I'm getting lost in the lights. Wow, those are pretty. I might end up stop doing what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, it's got some nice light effects. It sounds really good out of the box. It's like a little bit clacky, a little bit blocky. Ran out of the box. I'm, I'm honestly surprised how well this keyboard sounds. Just the specs. Today, we're taking a look at the Red Dragon A58 Pro Irelia. It is a 90% 94 key free mode with Bluetooth 3 and 5 pre-built. It is available in both a transparent black and a transparent white. It is a 3 and 5 pen hot swap compatible north facing PCB. It does come well dampened with both case and PCB plate dampening. It includes a custom linear clear or crystal switch that has a weight of 42 grams. The software for this Red Dragon is the Pro version, which includes remapping functionality, macros, as well as per key RGB. It is included with a 1600 hour milliamp hour battery and manufacturer retails for $69.99, though regularly is on sale for much lower. The chin of this keyboard sits at 18 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 27 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Raising the included pair of flip out feet will take the back up to 38 millimeters and change the typing angle to 12 degrees. This keyboard comes weighing in at 690 grams. 
All right, so today we took a look at the K658 Pro from Red Dragon. It is yet another uh, PC goodness. Um, polycarbonate plate, polycarbonate case. I'm not sure what the keycaps are made out of. I would have to guess they may be PC as well. Um, it actually sounds pretty nice out of the box, but I think I can get a very clacky sound out of this, so I will be coming back to it, uh, probably switching out the keycaps. I may actually, well, I've got a plan that I want to do with some of the transparent keyboards I have, but I don't want to really talk about it until I do it because I want to make sure that it works. But anyway, I am going to be coming back to mod this to get the best sound profile out of it. If there's anything that you guys would like me to take a look at it when I do come back, please leave me comments down in the section below. Let's start a conversation. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this Red Dragon keyboard. I do hope that you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions or comments, please throw them down below and let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.